Hey guys, it's Darwin, and today I wanted to talk about cold soaking and going stoveless on the trail, and if it's the right choice for you. Alright, so if you didn't notice, we're not in my typical filming locations. We're not out on the trail. I'm actually in a friend's garage, sitting outside of my trailer because it's crazy windy outside. So this will just have to do. Now at the beginning of 2017, I decided to start ditching my stove and going stoveless while out on the trail. Now there's a couple reasons that I did it, but since I did make that decision, I've gotten a ton of questions, whether it's here on the channel, it's through an email, over on Facebook, on Instagram, people wanting to know why I went stoveless, how I cold soak, what types of food I eat, and just asking if it would be a good option for them. So first, let's talk about going stoveless. Going stoveless is nothing new, and hikers have been doing it for decades. If you look back at John Muir, he used to put a piece of bread in his pocket and some tea in the other, and he just went for a walk. So even John Muir went stoveless while out on a hike. 90% of the times, whenever I go out on a day hike, I'm stoveless. I'll just throw some jerky or maybe some granola bars or some trail mix in my pack and I'll use that for food on the trail. Going stoveless in itself is nothing new to me. In 2015 when Snuggles and I were hiking the Appalachian Trail, we did carry a stove for that entire hike but there was an entire month where we didn't cook at all just because it was too hot and too muggy outside. I didn't really feel like eating hot food at the end of a hot day. So I have gone stoveless in the past. Now something that is completely new to me this year and something that I've really taken a liking to is cold soaking. So what is cold soaking? Cold soaking is taking a typical food that you would cook and just adding water to it and letting it rehydrate by itself cold. Now whether that's a typical dehydrated backpacker's pantry meal or a Nora rice side or instant mashed potatoes or ramen, it's just taking the container, putting food in it, adding water and just letting it set and letting the water rehydrate the food. Now a lot of hikers have started cold soaking because they can still eat a soft kind of saucy food that's different from your typical dry backpacking food, but not have to worry about carrying fuel or a stove or taking the time to cook it on the trail. Now even though I personally like cold soaking, let me say for the record, cold soaking is not always good. At the end of the day, you're eating cold, mushy food. That's just what cold soaking is. But for me, there's no backpacking food that really is good. There's never a time on the trail whenever I'm cooking that I'm eating a Nora rice side or instant mashed potatoes and I'm just so happy and just think it's mm, so good and I'd love to have it again when I was at home. I eat on the trail so I can get calories to replenish from my long day of hiking. I don't do it because I want to go ultra light. I don't do it because it's necessarily good. I do it because it is convenient and it's efficient for me when I'm out on the trail. So how do you cold soak? Well first you need some sort of a container and there's a ton of different types of containers that you can use to cold soak. One container in particular that is a favorite and is really easy and cheap is just a Ziploc bag. A lot of people will just take a Ziploc bag, they'll put their food in it, they'll put their water in it, shake it up, and let it set. I don't personally like using Ziploc bags because I think it's kind of wasteful. Now sure you can clean this out when you're out on the trail and reuse it, but I like something a little bit more durable and dependable, and that's why I use something like a soaking container. Now you can use a ton of different types of containers. I personally like a container that has some sort of a screw top tight lid. I use the Talenti ice cream jars, um, which are great because like for eight bucks you can get an awesome soaking jar and you get free ice cream. And there's a lot of people that just use a peanut butter jar to do their cold soaking. Pretty much any type of container that's gonna have like a screw top lid or a snap lid to make sure that the water and the food doesn't leak out whenever you put it back in your pack. And then there's some certain containers out on the market like the Vargo Titanium Bot that is a metal titanium cook pot that does have a screw top lid. Those are really cool too. They're just a little bit expensive for my taste. I might end up grabbing one of them, but for now, I like the Talenti jar. So how do you cold soak? Well, first off, you open up your jar, 
throw your food inside. Next, you're gonna add your water, and there's no real exact science to how to cold soak and how much water you need. The rule of thumb that I always use is I put just a hair more water over the food. So I kind of soak it, get the water right up past the food, and then that's it. I'll seal it up, I'll shake up the jar to really get all the water into the food to start rehydrating it, and then I'll put it back in my pack. Depending on what food that you're eating, it usually takes about 30 minutes to an hour and a half. Whenever you open it up, it's good and rehydrated and ready to eat. And like I said, there's no exact science on cold soaking. It all just comes down to trying different foods, different water levels, and experimenting and finding out what works best for you. Now, I don't always cold soak, and sometimes I still like using a stove on the trail. Just a few weeks ago, Nemo and I did a rim to rim to rim of the Grand Canyon, and I decided to carry a stove for that one. Why? I knew I was just gonna be out one night, and I hadn't had hot food on the trail for a while, so I felt like bringing it. And then next year on the PCT, I will be going stoveless for at least the first 700 miles through the desert, and then when I get to Kennedy Meadows, I'll probably pick up a stove to have it for the Sierras. So I don't always go stoveless, but most of the time it's a pretty good option for me. All right, and then the last topic that we'll talk about today is what types of food should you cold soak and what types of food do I cold soak? Now there's a lot of different types of food out on the market that you can experiment with and see if it will cold soak, but some of my favorites are ramen, dehydrated refried beans, instant mashed potatoes, couscous, dehydrated fruits and veggies, and oatmeal. All of those types of foods rehydrate really fast because they're either par-cooked or they're dehydrated, which means that they'll soak up that water faster and rehydrate themselves with just cold water. Now, something like dry beans or lentils or something is probably not gonna work in cold soaking. You'd probably have to end up cold soaking it for like eight hours for it to actually work. So try to find foods that are par cooked or dehydrated. And then I like to add things in like tuna or maybe some spam, cured meats like pepperoni or salami. So it doesn't just have to be plain old cold mashed potatoes. You can definitely add some stuff in there and give a lot more flavor and a lot more calories. Cold soaking is all about experimenting and trying different things, different water levels, adding different things, but you can make some pretty awesome meals out on the trail without a stove. One of my personal favorite cold soaking meals out on the trail right now is what I call a ramen bean bomb which is one pack of ramen noodles, which I usually take the flavoring packet, I throw that to the side, I'll crunch up my ramen noodles and put them inside of a Ziploc bag. Then I'll add half a cup of dehydrated refried beans. Now you can usually find these anywhere and they're in a bunch of different flavors. I really like the green chili ones because it adds a little bit of spice to it. And then I'll usually add like a packet of taco seasoning or pesto powder or maybe even a gravy mix just to put a different type of flavor in there. And that one little bag of food is 580 calories and it dehydrates pretty fast. It usually only takes me about 30 minutes to cold soak that in my jar. Sometimes I'll add tuna or maybe some pepperonis or salami to that, which will jack it up into that 700 or 750 calorie range. So it's a pretty good calorie per ounce meal that's really cheap that you can throw together pretty quick. All right guys, so hopefully this video helped you make a decision if cold soaking and going stoveless is something for you. Maybe it sounds like a good option to you and maybe not. Maybe you just need and want your hot food on the trail. So what are you currently doing on the trail? Are you into cold soaking or do you just go stoveless? Or do you need hot food every single time? Leave me something in the comment box below and let me know your thoughts. If you haven't had a chance yet, go over and check me out on Instagram. I've been posting a lot of new photos lately of some of the things that Snuggles and I have going on throughout the week, plus some pictures from some past hikes. If you found any value in this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.